it's time for another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life in general here in the Ozarks. Whether you are considering a move to this area or trying to learn more about the place you call home, we've got something special for you. Here's our host, Randy Wilburn. Hey folks, and welcome back to another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn. I am here in the Furman Garner Performance Studio at KUAF 91.3 FM, the only public radio station in Northwest Arkansas. Shout out to KUAF for providing me with such an awesome space to meet up with amazing people like my next guest and and do this podcast on a regular basis. And so Without further ado, I want to welcome, and before I actually welcome him onto the podcast, I am doing a series on NWA transplants, people that have found their way to Northwest Arkansas and have decided to call this place home, whether it was for work, whether it was to start a business, or whether it was to move a business and relocate it here to Northwest Arkansas. And I'm always interested to know the why behind it. Why would people end up? I know my story. A lot of you know my story, why I ended up here back in 2014. And I still, to this day, almost 10 years later, I can't, I I still have to pinch myself and say, why, how did I end up in Northwest Arkansas? But, you know, I know how now, but I think it's always important to understand that. And especially for people that are listening to this, that are maybe on the fence about moving here, because maybe you've heard some things about Arkansas in general. I'm here to tell you, Northwest Arkansas is a very special place. And I think you'll, you'll understand that as you hear our next guest, who is Dexter Caffey. And Dexter is the CEO of Smart Eye Technology. He has, he's come up with a revolutionary way to do continuous facial recognition for data protection. And I'm not going to get into the, the nuts and bolts of it. I'll let him explain it, but I'm so excited to have Dexter on. And, and honestly, the reason why I had him on is because I just saw a LinkedIn post about him relocating here recently. And I was like, man, this guy came here from Atlanta, Georgia, where a lot of people are trying to go to Atlanta. He came from Atlanta and decided to bring smart eye technology with him. And so without further ado, I want to welcome Dexter Caffey to the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. How are you doing, man? Randy, thank you so much for having me on your show today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, listen, I'd love for you just to, because like I said, we we met through LinkedIn. I would love for you just to kind of orient our audience into your, what we like to call here at the podcast, your superhero origin story. And you don't have to go that far back. I, my joke is always, you can go back to the cradle if you want. You can go back to Youngstown State where you went to school. It, it you can even just go back to the idea of even starting Smart Eye Technology and how you ended up here in Northwest Arkansas. But I'll I'll let you do that. But you have a superhero story, and we would love to hear it. Okay, absolutely, definitely. Well, you know, I moved here to uh, Northwest Arkansas actually in August of uh, last year. Okay, and I actually was recruited by the nonprofit organization Startup Junkie. Sure. So they found me online <laughs> and I didn't know too much about Northwest Arkansas at all, literally nothing. And so they said, hey, listen, we want to bring your technology to Northwest Arkansas to introduce your company to you know enterprises in the area. So I said, this will be a great way for us to start. And that's how I ended up here. Wow. So Jeff Amarine and the rest of the team over there, we know those guys really well and have participated with them on a number of events. I've even been on their podcast. But that's exciting to see that they sought you out and wanted to bring you here. That were you surprised when you when the initial call came? Yeah, I was actually very surprised because what happened was I had just applied for a startup program with a major credit card company. And I was very hopeful that I'd get into that program and literally I got turned down. Oh. Um, I had went through the first round, everything worked okay. And then the second round, they said, okay, we're going to have our executives talk to you. I was super excited about that. And they said, okay, you know what? We actually found all the companies we're going to work with this year. So thanks a lot. Good luck. Apply next year. Yeah. And I was literally like uh, very, very uh, discouraged. And literally probably the same day or the day after, you know, Startup Junkies, a uh, fuel accelerator program reached out to me. And they said, hey, listen, we wanted to take a look at your technology and wanted to do interview you by Zoom. So I literally ignored that email and tossed it aside. Did you really? I ignored it because I was so frustrated that I just got turned down. I couldn't, I couldn't accept another turn down emotionally. It just wasn't there. <laughs> and so what happened was a week later, Darian from the Fuel Accelerator Program, which you know, is, is under the Startup Junkie umbrella, Darian emailed me and said, hey, listen, we emailed you last week and we'd really like to take a look at your technology and by Zoom. 
So I said, well, this sounds kind of serious. So my wife said, Dexter, go ahead and apply. I said, okay, I went and applied. And then we did a Zoom call and I said, okay, what are, what's the likelihood of me actually getting into this uh, Startup Junkies Fuel Accelerator program? Sure. And, you know, the guy who ran it said, Tom said, listen, we have several other people we need to go through, so we can't tell you anything. Just if you, you'll hear something about the first week in July. First okay. week in July went by, I heard nothing. Second week in July went by, I heard nothing. Third week in July went by, you know, my wife said, Dexter, have you heard from the Fuel Accelerator program for Startup Junkie? And I said, no, it's another turn down. Like I said, this is why I didn't want to apply again. And literally within an hour of me saying that, Darian from a fuel accelerator program emailed me, said, congratulations, you know, Smart Eye Technology is now in the fuel accelerator program. And I said, oh my gosh, I couldn't believe the email. It was like a miracle. And so that's how it happened. Wow. I mean, it's, you know, sometimes that, it, that's how what life works though, right? I mean, you get down to the 11th hour and you think, oh, well, Whatever that dream is, it's probably deferred. Right. And in reality, it really wasn't. It wasn't. It was just being cooked at right. the moment. And then it, <laughs> it was finally ready for presentation. When And that presentation was the phone call where it was like, hey, by the way, we want you. Absolutely. So that must have felt really good. It felt extremely. I mean, I was so overjoyed. It was amazing. Yeah. that I love hearing stories like that. But as guess, as I back up, though, when I think about this, and I think about you came out of Atlanta. I mean, Atlanta's a... It's a hub for a lot of reasons. I mean, you got Georgia Tech down there. You've got, it's the seat of government for the state of Georgia. I mean, Georgia is a fast growing state in the South. Atlanta, as we know, I mean, Tyler Perry has a movie studio down there. I mean, they filmed half of the, the Marvel movie cinema world was filmed down there. I mean, it, there's a lot of things happening in Atlanta. Were you even remotely concerned about leaving Atlanta and what that represented to come to a place like Northwest Arkansas? After I came here in August through October of last year, one of the things that I noticed, Northwest Arkansas has a powerful business technology ecosystem. I've never experienced anything like that before in my life. And what I mean by that is companies want to do business with you because you're here and they want to promote and focus on technology startups in Northwest Arkansas. And that was powerful. And again, when I was in Atlanta, like I said, I love Atlanta for what it was, but there was no technology ecosystem when you're just out there on your own. On your own Congratulations, yeah. you, you started something. Who's going to help you? Right. That was the problem I ran into. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you bring up a good point. I mean, obviously the footprint of the area of Atlanta is much larger. You know, you're kind of a small fish in a really big pond, but you come here with the idea for smart eye technology and you instantly become a much bigger fish. And the, our pond is growing, but it's still small when you compare it to other places, right? But I mean, now, what are they saying? They're ascribing a word to this area. They're calling it the heartland. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, okay, there's a lot packed into that word. Mm -hmm. And to me, when I hear that word, the heartland, I hear potential. I hear opportunity. I hear growth. Mm -hmm. And and so that is, that is to me, what's really exciting about this area and how you can, it's very fertile ground for you to kind of grow something. Not Absolutely. that you can't do it elsewhere. Right. Right. But this is this time and this place and this moment, it's a good place to be to start a business. Absolutely. And one of the things I noticed too, Randy, is that the it's just in the fabric of folks here in NWA. It's the, in their fabric to have a, a strong ecosystem. When you go to the bigger cities, it's not in their fabric. Yeah. You're just out there all by yourself. It's great that you started something, but there's no ecosystem to actually that you feed upon and people feed upon you. It just doesn't exist in, in a lot of those big cities. And you're out there hoping and wishing and you're in a big, beautiful place with all these beautiful lights, but you're not in an ecosystem. You're not yeah. a, and and that's, that's a problem. And so if you're a startup, a lot of those big cities, good luck. Yeah. And, you know, you're absolutely right about that. And, I, and we've had other startups on this podcast. I'm thinking of Ox and several others that certainly that serve the CPG marketplace and Walmart, because we have that big company up there in Bentonville mm -hmm. that everybody's familiar with, that Fortune One, which makes it nice, right? Because if you're serving them, they're, I mean, that's, you've got the biggest company right in your backyard that you can go to and say, hey, we've got this amazing product. We have this amazing service that we think will benefit and enhance what you're already doing to be the number one resource for retail. Mm -hmm. But then there are other spaces, right? And even in the space that you're in, when you talk about biometric data, data protection, facial recognition, this is all still new. Mm -hmm. We're still in the early phases of this. So we Absolutely. have some, I mean, I, yes, I can open my phone with my face, but that's about it. Right. I can't do anything. I can't get, I know there are iris scans and things of that nature that will let me into certain 
biometric markers that will let me into certain buildings right, and, and right. other secure environments, but I don't really have access to those on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. And that was exactly why I created Smart Eye Technology, was really to create a biometric authentication platform yep. using continuous facial tracking. So in other words, once you've been authenticated, let's say you open up your Chrome browser. Yep. And once you open up your Chrome browser, it's only going to, number one, open up to your face and stay open up to your face. So if I were to walk behind you, Randy, while you had that Chrome browser up, looking at, let's say, something corporate that you're in, a, a corporate platform, a WW, whatever that is, corporate platform, as soon as I walk up behind you and say, hey, Randy, what are you looking at? It'll recognize my face and block all that data immediately. You see a big white screen that says, warning, multiple viewers. Why? Because it saw my face and my eyes should not be looking at your data. And that's kind of like how, not that a lot of industrial espionage happens on a plane, but I can tell you the number of times that I've sat on a plane and side-eyed somebody that was working on something or writing a book or fill in the blanks or Absolutely. working on a spreadsheet with yes. a lot of sensitive data and information. And they didn't have that little screen up that you typically have to put over your screen so that if you're looking at it from an angle, it kind of blurs or blocks things out. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's that technology from the 1990s, that screen protector. Yeah. So again, you take that, you rip that screen off or you move that screen protector. I mean, it, it, it's just something physical, but we're in that software base. So in other words, when a hacker tries to access your Chrome browser, by going remote. Have you ever had somebody work on your computer remotely and you cross your arms? Oh my God. Then, then you Open for the best, exactly, right? Exactly. Yes. I mean, and I have very, I only have faith every now and then because actually some companies typically will, would, what a lot of people don't realize is that most companies build a back door, mm-hmm. meaning that there was a program many years ago called Log Me In that would allow you to log into a program, another, an, uh, a remote computer. A lot of times now that these companies, when they build the software that they build, They already build in a key that you have to turn it on, but it's there Mm -hmm. and it's actually always there. Mm -hmm. I only learned that because the company that I was using for my accounting, it's called FreshBooks. Mm -hmm. They have that key and that capability. And all I do is I like shift command key K and then they ask me to give them the, the number that's there. They authorize me and authenticate me. Then they can take control of my computer if I give them permission to do it. And hackers use that same technology to do the same thing. It may not be that particular technology, but they use tools such as that to access. So in other words, think about it. Think about what you have inside of your Google Chrome. All your passwords, all of your usernames are saved for your bank accounts, your Netflix accounts, your Facebook accounts. They're all saved in there automatically for you. And so when the computer, when when a hacker accesses that Chrome browser, it just thinks it's you. So all those cookies are saved and everything opens up to you. So the passwords are there, the usernames are there. And so I have the same access as you do. Yeah. I'm just remotely. Yeah. So what Smart Eye says is unless you have Randy's face, you can't open up my Chrome browser. Wow. So this app, this original application for Smart Eye, is this, this is more of a B2B play or is it both B2B and B2C? It's actually both. Originally, we're starting this with the B2B market because we have, we've created an actual admin panel. So in other words, the system administrator can actually go in and decide which computers that they want to put this on, which Chrome browsers. 100 employees, 500 employees, 1,000 employees, they decide that information. And they also have other controls as well. So we built that in really for companies originally, but we do have part for individuals that will be coming out shortly after that. Okay, cool, Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, because I could, I mean, I could see how like I would want to use something like that and have access to it because it would just, you know, provide me with a little bit more peace of mind. I think nowadays with the dark web, with the the identity theft being at the level that it's at now, it's like everybody has to worry about everybody, you know, and that's one of the problems. That's one of the problems, Randy. I mean, if you think about it, you know, once somebody gets access to that Chrome browser, they've got your life. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. That's really amazing. So now talk a little bit about your background and how did you stumble upon this whole concept of smart eye technology? What was it? Did you have a bad experience that caused you all <laughs> on the plane that all of a sudden said, you know, no one's ever going to look at my screen again? Or what was it that, you know, prompted you to start this company? Well, I'm from Ohio originally, Youngstown, Ohio, yep. and majored in business finance yep. at Youngstown State University. Shout out to the Penguins. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> love, the, love, love YSU, as we call it, YSU. So, so what happened, um, I moved to Atlanta like in 1996, right after the Olympics. Okay. And I actually got into the commodities trading business. So oh, I nice. did futures and options trading, things like corn, wheat, soybeans. So I did that and owned my own company for over 20 years. Okay. And what happened was I was on a business trip one day to Israel. 
And I happened to see this guy at the cybersecurity event as we were talking. I looked at his laptop screen and I noticed that I could see data on his laptop screen. And the thought hit my mind, why should I be able to see any data on this guy's laptop screen? It's none of my business. I said, what if we could create software called Smarter Technology that would just recognize my face as I looked at that data? That's how the idea started. Wow. Okay. So, and then I guess with, as computers have continued to get better and smaller with more uh, productivity around them, what do you need in order to be able to utilize your software effectively on, on a regular device? Just your laptop's camera. That's it. That's it. Okay. And yeah, you smile. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> people don't realize that people, if people have access to your camera, they can spy on you that way. And in the same way, this software utilizes that some of that same technology to determine if there are other people looking at your screen other than the person that's supposed to be looking in at In addition it. to that, so if you have what they call multiple viewers, if somebody's walking behind you, you know, we'll block the entire screen says warning multiple viewers. But if someone, let's say a hacker, is trying to get in that same session that you're in as you're in your Chrome browser looking at any corporate or whatever information you're looking at, we'll have a notification so we'll know when somebody's knocking on that door trying to get in. Yeah. So we'll know exactly. And we'll have the actual location where they're coming from, the IP address. So we'll let all that data is for the system administrator to see exactly, wow, this came from this rogue country and they were trying to get in at the time when I was in that Chrome session. Wow. Okay. So what's been the feedback that you've received so far since you got here? And what, I guess, yeah, I'd be curious to know what the feedback has been since you started in this program. And then, you know, what has been for you the biggest aha moment since you got here to Northwest Arkansas? Well, one of the biggest aha moments was actually we were just talking to a our first cu- customer and they wanted our technology being a Chrome browser. And so I had had that in the roadmap down the road and I said, well, let's just do this. Why don't we put it in there now as a plugin or an extension? And that was the big aha moment because now that's scalable and everybody can use that now. So that was a huge aha moment at that time there. And so, but that was one of the things that actually happened to me, just literally just realizing that you listen to customers, they tell you how they want your technology. Yeah. So, I mean, so basically you're saying that that SmartEye technology has a Chrome browser extension in the extension store? Yeah, it will be May 3rd. Starting May 3rd, it'll be ready in okay. May, May 3rd. So anybody will be able to go there and download that extension from the uh, Chrome browser store and will be able to have that on your computer. So your Chrome browser will have what's called the SETI mode on your Chrome browser. So that's pretty exciting to see. Yeah, SETI standing for Smart Eye Technology Inc. So we had a long conversation <laughs> about SETI and it means a lot of things, but uh, but certainly I, I think it's actually, it's almost like this was predestined to happen. Absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> so, absolutely. You know, That's a long story. So that is exciting. So tell me, I mean, especially for people that are listening to this, and I mean, of course, you hear some of the stories, but what statistics do you have that you typically share with people about really how prevalent this really is, that that this is more of a problem than people realize. It's like a lot of people think, oh, well, nobody's really trying to get my data. But I mean, we just saw recently as at the time of we're recording this, there was a guy in an airport in Salt Lake City. I don't know if you saw this story the other day, taking photographs of people's boarding passes. Mm -hmm. And he was able to use that to board a plane, exactly a Delta flight in Salt Lake City. Absolutely. And so that's a great point. (laughs) That's a great point, Randy. So if you think about like one of the biggest problems out there right now, if you look at the freight industry, the trucking industry, there was a study I read the other day that was, there was an increase in freight theft over 68% in the fourth quarter of last year. So what's happening, hackers are getting inside of the freight industry and they're getting what's called a pickup number. So let's just say you're a truck driver and you go pick up your load. You show them your driver's license and that pickup number and you can drive off with that load. Well, hackers are saying, well, listen, let's go in and get that pickup number and let's create a fake driver's license and we'll go get the load that Randy was going to have. We'll go get all those $200,000 worth of goods and they drive off with it. Right. This is real. It's hitting Good everything. Grief. I didn't even think about it so like what, that. So what we're doing at Smart Eye Technology is we're actually going to uh, have it for the uh, freight industry to where basically if you drive up to a, uh, a load, uh, we're going to say, okay, great. Give us your cell phone number. You give us your cell phone number. Okay. You'll expect a text message to you, which will be the Smart Eye Technology platform to authenticate yourself with your face, your voice, and fingerprint and other biometrics. Then we'll give you access to take that load. Wow. Okay. So I have to imagine that companies like another little company up the street from here, <laughs> J- J.B. Hunt, that would be exciting for them. Anybody in logistics Absolutely. that have to deal with this kind of thing. Because freight theft is real and it's yeah. happening and it's exploding right now. And hackers are actually getting into your, into those platforms and they're getting those pickup numbers. Wow. 
man. Okay. You got me thinking about a bunch <laughs> of things. All right. So I want to unpack this because I do want to hear some of your stories based on your experience. And, and I want to go back to the folks at Startup Junkie because they are dear friends of mine. Just everybody that's there, I've appreciated working with them for a number of years now. But what was your, I'm sure, like with anything, because you don't know anybody, there may have been some apprehensions, but how quickly was that all, did that all melt away for you as you got more familiar with what Startup Junkie was all about? Well, when I first came here to uh, Northwest Arkansas, like I said, I didn't know anybody. Yeah. I didn't have any friends here. Just Had you uh, been here before? No, my first time in human history. <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> yes, okay. Yes. Okay. So this was all new to this you. This was all yeah. new. I knew about the bike riding and all those things like that, but I knew I didn't know anyone. And so just recently, just last week, we actually had our ribbon cutting ceremony. Um, Congratulations. Uh, the, thank you so much for the, yeah. uh, our office at the uh, Ledger Building in Benton, downtown Bentonville. And so we had over 100 people at that event. Wow. Absolutely amazing. So again, I, I didn't know anybody. So I, it really took me some time, a few months to get a few months to really kind of get into the system and see how things operated here. But when I came here, Randy, like I said, the thing that I really began to understand was the power of the ecosystem here. And like I said, most big cities, they don't have that. You're out there on your own here. It's on purpose of that we're doing business with companies here in Arkansas because this is what we're promoting. Sure. And this is that's powerful. That's extremely powerful. Yeah. Well, how do you like that ledger building? I love that ledger building. <laughs> I ride my bike up, that, that, up it, down. It's that nice, ramp. isn't yes, it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's it, that's I'm a huge bike rider. I love riding bikes. I do that practically daily, depending on the weather. Right. Uh, I'm out there practically every single day. I love that. That's the one <laughs> thing I have not done yet. I mean, I, I've been to, I've worked out of the ledger. I've been there to MC a few events. I'll actually be there at the time of us recording this. I'm actually going to be there emceeing the Saturday night session for the Northwest Arkansas Fashion Week. Okay. Which is happening at the end of this week at the Ledger. Oh. At the end of the week that we're recording this, by the time you listen to this podcast, that event will have already happened. But Fashion Week, typically Interform does a couple of Fashion Week events a year in Northwest Arkansas. In 2024, the first one for Spring Fashion Week is going to be held at the Ledger. And the Ledger is, a, is just a wonderful building. Absolutely. Very unique building. It was built with bicyclists in mind because right. literally you can ride your bike up the levels of floors at the building. You can drive there too, <laughs> but you can also ride your bike there. And it's really well put together. It's just off of the Bentonville Square. There's a bunch of brand new hotels being built up there. 240 There's South Main Street. 240 South Main Street. Mm -hmm. You've got amazing restaurants that are right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have a little bit of everything. So, Absolutely. I mean, it's it's just in the heart of it all. And that's when I think of that and I think of what Bentonville looked like in 2014 when I moved here mm -hmm. versus when you moved here mm -hmm. in the summer of 2023, right. <laughs> it has changed. Wow. It has changed okay. tremendously. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that hasn't changed is the openness that you will find in this area with people, especially in, in the business environment, they want to see other people succeed. Absolutely. And I'm sure you have felt that since you've been here. That's why I moved here. That's exactly why. Because that was the spirit that I saw that they want to see you succeed. They want to help you grow. Yeah. I mean, Startup Junkie, is, is, that's why Startup Junkie exists today, Yeah. to actually help startups grow. That's their mission. It is. It definitely is. So you must have, I mean, what, what are your plans, the, the near-term and, and short-term and, and mid-term plans to grow smart eye technology now that you're starting to put actual products out on the market? Well, I, well like I said, our product will be out May 3rd. And what I'm looking to do, I'm actually looking to bring, hopefully I've just talked to a guy earlier today about possibly hiring somebody from uh, U of A. So we're going to you know, see how that works there. And uh, also talking to another person about bringing a person in who, who can actually uh, focus on enterprise sales, and they've already had experience in enterprise sales. So we're looking to kind of grow our enterprise sales team because we'll have that product out there to introduce to the enterprise market. Yeah. And that's the cool thing about enterprise sales is that, as we were saying earlier before we started recording, you can figure out what their need is and meet that specific need. Absolutely. Like if I, as an individual consumer, myself and my neighbor might have two drastically different ways that we want to use your technology, exactly. but it would be, it would make sense for you to try to figure that out. Right. But at an inter enterprise level, mm -hmm. and even sometimes at an SMB level, you can kind of figure that out and work, reorganize how you present your product. Exactly. Same technology, you just wrap it in a different wrapper. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. <laughs> That's exciting. So, I mean, again, what, 
how long is the program that you're in with Startup Junkie? How long does that last? That actually ended October 30th. So oh, it did? Yeah. So okay. what happened, my mentor from Atlanta called me. Um, and the reason that, I, that my last final reason for moving here to Northwest Arkansas, he called me and said, hey, Dexter, um, when does the program end? And I said, October 30th. And he said, I hope you don't plan on coming back here to Atlanta. I said, yeah. I said, why? I got my wife there and my dog there. And I said, why wouldn't I come back? Yeah. And he said, you're getting too much traction in Northwest Arkansas. Why would you ever come back here to Atlanta? What are you going to do? Look at the walls? I said, oh, my goodness. I said, you're right. I said, you're right. So that's exactly. That's a good mentor. Absolutely. <laughs> that's Absolutely. a good mentor. So, <laughs> I mean, sometimes you need that help, right? We, you know, you can't, some, sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees. And I couldn't. That and are I, right in front of you. You're right. And that's yeah. why, I mean, I wasn't even thinking like that. And he just automatically called it for what it was. And I said, yeah. oh, my goodness. How quickly did you decide that, that um, we're going to go ahead and make this home? It was immediately, even before the program ended. Okay. Had you brought your wife out to visit? No, actually, my wife, is, she's a school teacher in Atlanta. So she's actually moving here in uh, June of this year. So, so she hasn't physically been here. Oh, she's been here twice. Oh, she's okay. She's so coming she next week as well. So, well, yes. what was her initial thoughts of Northwest Arkansas? Actually, actually, it was cold when she got here the first time back oh, in November. So okay, she didn't really okay. get a chance to see a lot. Yeah. But she came back a few weeks ago, and she said, "Dexter, she said I love it here. Nice. She just, I mean, this one guy. I give you an example. We were at um, a restaurant in downtown Bentonville, and she was. Trying you can to drop the name if you want. Okay, Table Mesa. Table yeah, Mesa. Table That's my favorite good. place. It's I good love food. Table Mesa. I food. love it. Yes. Yes. They got some competition now with um, uh, tacos and tamales. Yes, but listen, which Table is, Mesa. But Table Mesa. That's my is, spot. It's been it's been there since I moved here. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so love they, it. Yeah, and so uh, so we were at Table Mesa. You know they have that little uh, section over there for pastries. Yes, exactly. So she wanted it one of those pastries and so she couldn't make up her, this, up her mind and this one guy was behind her and he said hey listen you know have you ever tried the blueberry uh, whatever it was and she said no I haven't he said hey he told the um, the person who was waiting on us say hey why don't you uh, put that on my tab and go ahead and get that for her yeah I said what what is this she looked at me like Dexter what type of place is this I know I, I know. said this is northwest Arkansas this yeah. is how things happen exactly that's how we get down here man <laughs> exactly. so trust me I was I was I was skeptical just like the the rest of them when right. I first moved here in right. 2014 <laughs> but I quickly understood that this this place is a very um it's a very giving place absolutely and and that's that more than anything else is really what got me excited about northwest Arkansas and I and I moved Moved here with three kids. Mm -hmm. um, I moved here with with my wife, and and you know we we were full on tilt uh, when we moved here, and so. <laughs> but I mean, I I wouldn't trade it for the world now, and I, I you know I still think it's like one of the best kept secrets. But what I have been telling friends that are that have businesses or want to start businesses, this is a very fertile place for you to get something off the ground where Absolutely. you can take a proof of concept. And you, you're not, people are not going to laugh at you, but people will genuinely, you know, saddle up to you and, and ask, how can I help? Absolutely. And one of the things you mentioned was we're giving. And this is exactly what's the word in my mind as I was driving over here, uh, getting ready to do your show is what I was, my thoughts of, of, of uh, Northwest Arkansas. And you said the perfect word. It's a giving uh, community. In other words, people want to help you and you want to help other people as well yeah. as a result of that. So it's not one of those taking communities where you go to a place and they say, what can you do for me? <laughs> right. This right, is right, what right. can, what can, I, how can I help you? Yeah. And that's amazing. That's amazing mindset. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's different. And I mean, that's kind of what I've done with this podcast is I've basically shared my platform with anyone um, that has a great story to tell, because I think it's important. I think stories matter. Uh, and each each and every one of us has a story to tell, and and that's that goes for all of you listeners out there of the podcast. We appreciate we appreciate you guys, whether you listen to us on KUAF, whether you listen to us on Ozarks at Large, or you download the podcast every week, and and you're you know a frequent listener. It's it's important to know that these stories do matter, absolutely. And, and you know we want to encourage everybody to tell their story early and often. That's why. Podcasting such a big thing for us, but um, so so what what do you what do you think the future holds? I mean, obviously your wife's moving here in a couple of months, as you as you mentioned, and um, I mean, what do you, what are you hoping for? Well, one of the things I want to focus on is really like uh, hiring people, um, helping us to grow here. And that's my key focus for the next uh, three to six months is, is to focus on that. And so, uh, like I said, we already got you know plans in place for uh, that to start to, the the process to start to happen. And uh, and so we're looking to you know grow really quickly here and to hire as quickly quickly as we can to move forward. Um, okay. You know, based on sales and things like that as well. Yeah. So Absolutely. obviously, and it makes sense to bring bring somebody in that can bring in more business. So enterprise sales is important. 
right. from a business development standpoint. And at some point in time, I'm sure you'll need somebody to help out with sales and mark additional sales and marketing, and then just you know extending the brand to the widest audience possible. Exactly. Because I can think of so many different applications, and I and I know that you know that there have been a, a ton of applications when you think of like smart eye technology. Uh, when it comes to this facial recognition, I I, I go back to that um, Minority Report movie with Tom Cruise <laughs> and some of that stuff that we saw 15, 10, 15 years ago that's now a reality. Right. And you're at the cutting edge of that reality. Absolutely. So that's got to be exciting. It's very exciting. Yeah. Randy. I tell you, and like I said, one of the things that I do uh, – want to focus on is really uh, guarding against fraud. Um, yeah. And that's that's one of the biggest things because it's so rampant in, in every aspect of life, every aspect. I can't tell you how many people I walk up to and say, this just happened out of my account or this thing happened. Or, I mean, it, I hear these stories every day. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, I've, as, as a, a former victim of identity theft, I know exactly what you're talking about. As a matter of fact, I've gone through something recently with my Coinbase account. I don't have a ton of cryptocurrency in there, but uh, I kept getting a notification from Coinbase that somebody was trying to change my password Absolutely. and all this other stuff. And it's so pervasive. It is. And people are out there scamming and trying to hack into people's stuff all on day a daily, long. All day long. And the same way that you go to work <laughs> each day with your coffee in your hand, that hacker or whomever, they got their coffee in their hand right. too with their scone and they're going to try to jam you up Absolutely. and people don't realize right. it. So it's just like just as hard as you work at your job, people out there working hard to take everything that you have, especially from an identity perspective. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. And so I think what you're doing is really important. And actually, I'm, I'm all here for biometric data. And sharing a lot of that because I do believe that that is a wave of the future. Absolutely, and it will. There will come a point in time where when you'll you'll basically use your iris to get into your house mm -hmm. or your thumb mm -hmm. or, or thumbprint or something along those lines. And right. I know everybody's seen a movie where you know somebody got killed to take their eye out exactly. or their hand or hand or whatever. But that's science fiction. I'm talking right. about real life. Exactly, and also just allowing you because I, I guess what I was reading recently is that. Obviously, they're using biometric data at the airports now, mm -hmm. but they're going to be doing more of that. And it's just going to make it easier for you to go through some of these lines that you get to at the airport. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, yeah. it, it moves business a lot, a lot faster because think about it. I mean, how many people out there like passwords and usernames? No, no. I hate no, them. It's no. just like I, I can never remember them. Right, right. And it's just like right. you got to go back and change it. And, and it's just a mess. And that's 1980s and 90s technology that yeah. we're using to yeah. guard the safeguard our data today. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, man, before we close out, I do want to ask you, if you were talking to somebody that, and outside of everything that we just mentioned, if you were talking to somebody that was kind of on the fence or thinking about moving here to Northwest Arkansas, what would be the one thing outside of the mountain biking, which I know you like to do, <laughs> the great office that you have at the ledger, the fact that people are real, a real giving space, what would you say that really also stands out to you about Northwest Arkansas that maybe you weren't aware of before you came here? I would say probably the nature here. Okay. Um, the nature is really amazing to see how the sun rises here and to see the beautiful like creeks and and it's it's just absolutely amazing to see that. It really is. And people sometimes take it for granted. Have you been down to Devil's Den yet? I have not. Okay. So you got to check out Devil's Den. Okay. And then what's right in your backyard is Hobbs State Park. Okay. Which is right there in Rogers. Beautiful parkland. It's been around for a long period of time. And then, of course, you gotta, you're gotta you going to have to eventually float the buffalo. Okay. I would say wait <laughs> until your wife comes and then you guys can kind of experience some of that stuff together. Absolutely. But trust me when I say it, the outdoor activity here, it's second to none. Right. And, and I, didn't, I wasn't aware of that before. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, yeah, you, you don't have to go far to be in nature here. Right. And sometimes that's the recipe for a new idea. Right. Absolutely. You're right about that. <laughs> so, I love that. You know, so, yeah. So, <laughs> so that, that's why I think this is going to be a real fertile area for you to grow um, smart eye technology to what it can ultimately be. Absolutely. So, yeah. If people want to connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, you can actually go on my LinkedIn, just type in Dexter Caffey, that's C-A-F-F-E-Y, right. and you'll be able to find me. I don't think there's sure. another Dexter Caffey out there. That's, no, again, I, Dexter, C-A-F-F-E-Y. Yeah. And just connect with me. Some You can follow me, uh, however you need to do it. Just reach out to me there, and I'll respond. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll put all that in the show notes. Is there, Smart Eye has a website, right? Yeah, it's called Get, G-E-T, Smart I, e -Y -E com. It's Get Smart okay. com. All right. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. We'll make sure that all of that is in the show notes and then people can connect with you and, and learn more about what you're doing. And so 
Dexter Caffey, thank you so much. And again, personally, I'm not part of the welcoming committee for Northwest <laughs> Arkansas, but you would think so. But on behalf of everyone here, we want to welcome you and Smart Eye Technology and then soon your wife to be our neighbors here in Northwest Arkansas. We certainly appreciate you giving this area a chance. Absolutely. And uh, I'm going to grab my popcorn and I'm going to be rooting for you at every turn. So we wish you nothing but continued success. And thanks again for jumping down here from Bentonville to sit down with us and chop it up for a couple of minutes. Oh, it's my pleasure, Randy. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, there you have it, folks. Another episode of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. Remember, to learn more about us, you can visit us online at IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We are on the interwebs. We are on, on every major platform, especially Instagram at I Am Northwest Arkansas. Oh, by the way, did you guys know I trademarked the name? Yes, I Am Northwest Arkansas is all mine now. Well, it's partially yours, too, because you support me by listening to this podcast. But seriously, it's kind of cool to be able to lay claim to this name and, and you know, while I am Northwest Arkansas, so are you. And so I really want to encourage you to to continue spreading the word about this great area that we call home from Bella Vista down to Fayetteville, from Siloam over to Eureka Springs. This is a really special part of the state up here in the Northwest corner. So we certainly encourage you to check out Northwest Arkansas and see what it's all about. See why Dexter Caffey moved his business here to Northwest Arkansas. I think you won't be disappointed. But that's all we have for this week. Remember, you can check out our episode on Ozarks at Large every Tuesday, both at 12 noon and at 7 p.m., as well as download the podcast when it comes out every Monday, rain or shine. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and we will see you back here next week for another new episode of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. Peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Check us out each and every week, available anywhere that great podcasts can be found. For show notes or more information on becoming a guest, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We'll see you next week on I Am Northwest Arkansas.